This video is sponsored by NordVPN, just like every other video on this website. Look, when I want to show you, you gotta promise me you won't tell mom or dad. I promise. I love it when a movie is created for the sole purpose of beating its audience over the head with an overbearing moral message, only to then turn out to be so incompetent and ridiculous that what you're left with can only be described as so bad it's brilliant. This is nothing new, of course. From Boys Beware, which portrayed homosexuals as child molesting predators. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick. A sickness that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious a sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual, a person who demands an intimate relationship with members of their own sex. Reefer Madness, which demonized marijuana use. Marijuana, the burning weed with its roots in hell. To those comics and films in the 80s that made Dungeons and Dragons out to be either a corrupting influence or a satanic recruitment tool. Robbie! Pardue, what are you doing? Going to join the Great Hall. You can't, it's a trap. I have spells. And more recently, Swiped. Girls, you have the power. Don't give that up. It's like fifth wave feminism. I like it. I recently discovered another one of these, and it's just as bad. I'd like to thank Internet Historian for pointing this one out to me. If you don't know who that is, what are you doing with your life? I even did a cameo in one of his recent videos, so if nothing else, go give that a watch. Anyway, this one's called Cyber Seduction, His Secret Life. It isn't, as the name implies, an OC about a man who gets seduced by an internet router. What it is, is a moral panic-inducing propaganda film courtesy of American Winchathon channel Lifetime. And it's about a teenage boy who gets addicted to... How do I say this in an ad-friendly way? How about... Doing it like they do on the Discovery Channel? In this shocking footage taken by researchers, a seal forces itself on a helpless king penguin. Hmm... The visual representation of the exchange of bodily fluids? I can't say Ookie Mouth and have Kenny spit down my throat at the same time. It's impossible. Practice makes perfect, Bobby. Uh, Media which is designed to entertain using copious amounts of nudity and some questionable writing? Oh, f*** it. He gets addicted to pornography, so much so that it completely ruins his life, validating the fears of the hand-wringing middle-aged housewives who eat this shit up while assuming their little angels are doing smack because they got an A- on a test. Combine this melodramatic attitude with a laughable script and awful acting, and you'd better believe it's as poorly made, out of touch, and unintentionally hilarious as it sounds. So grab your popcorn and your dildos, and let's penetrate this hot, sticky mess. It opens with our protagonist Justin stumbling into his school, looking rather worse for wear and trying to drown himself in the swimming pool, like a sim controlled by a sadistic player. In true sim fashion, just three months earlier, his life is seemingly perfect, as he wins a swimming competition, cheered on by his friends and family, makes out with his hot girlfriend Amy, and finds out he made the Allstate swimming team. Because of this, some cool senior kids take a liking to him, while he takes a liking to this guy's girlfriend, Monica, and she to him, apparently. Doesn't he have a girlfriend? Amy? You know, the one he was just making out with? Yeah, how to be a lie against Monica. <laughs> I'm glad there isn't. A law against a person? When he gets home, his friend sends him a link to Monica's page. That's literally what it's called. The writers must have really strained themselves for that one. Where she uploads low-res pictures and videos of herself doing vaguely sexual things like... Just sitting there. Totally hot. Maybe if he's lucky, she'll show her ankles. And given the context, the fact that his friend keeps referring to him as Stroke Man is really disconcerting. It's either an instruction, or the name of a useless superhero. He almost gets caught by his dad, having left the door open. You'd think he'd learn his lesson, but later on he almost gets caught by his mop, because he left the door wide f***ing open while looking at barely legal teens. 
There's having a danger wank, and then there's being an idiot. He gets invited to a party that Monica will be at, so he brings his girlfriend along, which is probably the worst thing to do if he's trying to ride the school bike. In the basement, the cool kids are sat around watching porn together? Yeah, who does that? Monica's into it though, obviously. I don't get the whole thing. I mean, the way they do it, it's so mechanical. Animal Channel shows better relationships. But this husband has come home to find his wife with another penguin. He flips out. His strategy is simple. Batter the homewrecker until he flees. Ah, didn't know you are gonna watch animals do it. You see, she's a good, sensible Christian girl who, according to this movie, should be a model for all women. So she wants to take things slow and wait for the right time to have sex so that when they do, it will be magical. Bitch, we all know that the only magic that will be happening is when he reaches 30 without getting his weenie wet, which he will at this rate. He pretends to be into it, but when his friend sends him a link to more seedy stuff, he goes on a p watching binge. And his mum catches him properly this time because he left the door open again? That's not just stupid. That's plot convenient levels of stupid. From the way she reacts, you'd think he'd been looking at Snuff or Belle Delphine. Not a pair of censored boobies, because she rushes upstairs to tell his dad, but he's like, eh, it's fine. He fulfills a trope common to these Lifetime movies, the naive, bumbling father with a laissez-faire attitude who serves as a counterpoint to the highly strong, paranoid and invasive mother who preaches the central message of the film. He's going to be proven wrong, you see. After getting caught, Justin goes right back to it, continuing his downward spiral. Thing is, the film doesn't make much effort to explain why p*** is bad in and of itself, and when it does, it misses the point entirely. It's just assumed that p*** is a bad thing, and the effects we witness are because it's bad, like when he starts sexualizing every girl around him. I mean, come on, like he wouldn't have done that without the p***. Most teenage boys would f*** a banister if its curves were proportional. And when his swimming performance starts to suffer, the p*** is implicated, and it's only incidentally linked to his staying up all night drinking energy drinks to watch it, which could be said about any addiction. And to be honest, I'd be much more worried about that impending diabetes. What's he even doing while he's watching it? Despite his voracious consumption, there isn't a single reference to masturbation anywhere in the film, which is the entire point of it, surely? Maybe they thought that would be a bit much for their prudish audience. Or the law, in fairness. And I know that all the stuff on display is really tame, but you're telling me that he doesn't get his rocks off to all this fine totty even once? I'm calling bullshit. In other news, his mum learns how to check someone's internet history and that it's possible to delete it. Hardly the best way to cover your tracks. Fortunately, we now have access to far more effective methods of hiding our online activities, like incognito mode, or, even better, VPNs. Ad time. Online security has never been more important, and with governments, criminals, and internet service providers all trying to spy on your online activities and steal your sensitive information, you really should be using a virtual private network like NordVPN. When connected to a VPN, your internet traffic is protected behind military-grade encryption, so that even if someone does manage to intercept it, it'll look something like this. So you won't have to worry about anyone seeing what sick sh** you get off to. NordVPN has thousands of servers in over 60 countries that are fast and easy to connect to, allowing you to change your location on the fly. Look, boy! Now I'm in Australia! Now I'm in America! Australia! America! I get Australia, it, Dad! America! Australia! America, 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 America! America! Australia! Oh! It's especially useful for when you're on public Wi-Fi, which you really shouldn't be using without a VPN, because it really is like watching with your door open. As well as keeping you safe, a VPN also comes in handy for... other things. That amazing show you want to watch isn't available in your region? Boom! NordVPN! Uh, what, what's that, European Union? Y you want to ban my memes? Boom! NordVPN! Oh my green and pleasant land, y you want me to buy a license for my porn? Boom, NordVPN. Go to nordvpn.com slash cynical reviews to get 75% off a three year plan. That's $2.99 a month and you can use it on six devices simultaneously. That's a f***ing steal. And if you use the code cynical reviews, you'll get an extra month for free and you'll also be helping to support my channel. So do it, you perverts. Get NordVPN and protect yourself online today. Speaking of perverts, back to the film. Under pressure from Justin's mum, his dad goes to talk to him about his p 
start watching. The conversation is incredibly awkward, but he tries to emphasise that relationships are about more than getting physical. They are aware that he has a girlfriend, right? Who's very much into the non-physical side of things? They haven't mentioned it, so maybe they don't know about her. But why would he be hiding it from them? He has no reason to. None of this makes sense, but they both agree that there's nothing to worry about. Except that he then goes back to it, having finally learned how to shut the door. Still a better character arc than anything in The Last Jedi. His obsession deepens, to the point where he's even looking at softcore stuff during swimming practice, and then emailing it to himself using his girlfriend's PDA. Remember those? Of course you don't. He even takes a quick break while writing an essay. Makes sense, I took one about a page ago. His brother bursts in, because locking the door is still beyond him. The brother threatens to tell their mum, so Justin agrees to show him what he was looking at, which apparently traumatises him. Bugs, what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, he, he's all pumped up, he just defeated the drug dealer in Grand mm -hmm. Theft Auto. Nice. Wait, so the mom is not okay with her older son looking at some barely titillating tartars, but is basically fine with her younger son playing a mature rated game where you can have virtual sex with prostitutes and then murder them? I don't... I don't... I... What? This film was released during the Jack Thompson era when controversy surrounding the GTA series was at its peak. How could they not have picked up on this? Have you and Monica done anything? No. No, it'd be a little too weird with Dooley, but you... What did he say? His friend is again encouraging him to pursue Monica, and neither of them mentions Amy at all. I'm starting to think the writers forgot she existed as well. Then Justin shows his friend a really tame bondage website, but his friend is like, Nah, what the f***, bro, that's too much. But you gotta check out this thing with the huge... What is he saying? I don't care, bro. That stuff's way too twisted. But encouraging him to cheat on his girlfriend was fine. As if the film wasn't weird enough already, he sees his mum swimming and starts fantasising about swimming with her. A nice surprise. Wanna join me? No, I just, um, got to finish um, homework and study hall, so just came down to see if you were still working out. I think I know where this is going. During a swimming contest, he's once again emailing sexy pictures to himself using Amy's PDA. It says he's just sending them from the desktop, so surely she'd easily be able to find out just by looking? But she doesn't. Distracted by the p he finishes third in the race, and his mum is so disappointed in him that she acts like he took a literal s*** in the pool. It turns out that his mum is pushing him so hard to be a great swimmer because they can't afford to pay for college, and she has no faith in his chances of getting in without a swimming scholarship. Although judging by his spelling throughout the movie, I can't say I blame her that much. Later that evening, he goes for a sneaky dip, and imagines a bunch of sexy ladies swimming with him. Quite literally a wet dream. Meanwhile, his brother is looking at on his PC, emailing some to himself, and then he steals one of the CDs Justin has burned full of images. Why does he steal it? If he has his own computer to play it on, why not just use that computer to go booby cruising? Very quickly, his mum finds the CD on which he's written Virgin Vaginas? What a complete dumbass. Everyone knows you name it something like homework. And I'm sorry, but no kid, no matter how young or stupid, would attempt to hide in his top drawer. That CD should have had plot contrivance written on it. They confront Justin when he gets home, and he blames the guys at school, saying they sent him the as a joke. But then, why wouldn't he just delete it? Why would he burn it onto a CD? And he claims not to know which guy sent it to him, but his parents believe him because they're idiots. With the little brother's help, his mum sets up parental controls on his computer. But then he tells her that they know how to get around the software. Why would he tell her that? And why would he wait until she's finished installing it to tell her that? So not only is he a snitch, he's a f***ing terrible one. And hold up a second, they're saying that Justin is tech-savvy enough to get around parental controls, but not enough to set a password to keep his little brother off his computer. Have these writers ever used anything more powerful than a calculator? To get around this problem, Mum decides to take the power cable with her when she leaves the house. So Justin has to use an internet cafe to chat with Monica, asking when they can get... to gather. Well, thank f*** he's not trying to get an English scholarship. Genius here gets a call from Amy, who he's been ignoring. He blows her off again to watch Monica on webcam. I've seen more explicit material at Bible camp. 
Oh come on, at least pretend to be an actor. He lies to his parents so he can go and meet Monica at a bar. And they have this awkward date where she's very forward about sexualizing him. I bet you look incredibly hot in one of those tiny bins. And then mere minutes after meeting him, she moves to sit next to him and puts his hand on her boob and then invites him back to her place because her parents aren't home. Can you imagine if the genders were reversed? She's a senior and he's a sophomore? This is not okay. Hey, Justin, what's up? What was the point of that? In the boys' locker room, his friends call him a freak because of his watching habits and say they're still getting spam from his website visits. This is kind of their fault though for getting him into in the first place, and for watching together at a party, that was weird as fuck. And for encouraging him to cheat on his girlfriend with this guy's girlfriend who has a sexy website, but no, he's the freak. At the same time, for validation in her anti-erotica crusade, the mum listens to her friend's story about how her husband's addiction destroyed their marriage. And even though she says, this isn't meant to scare you, that's exactly what this scene is meant to do. Terrify the paranoid busybodies who watch this shit. Amy's getting annoyed that Justin's ignoring her, so he goes around to her place. They start making out, then he tries to take her clothes off, but because she's a good, wholesome Christian girl, she says no. He gets frustrated, they have an argument, and he storms off. And he tried to get hot and heavy with her with the door open? What an absolute chad. <laughs> no, but I, I think Tammy Carson has a hold on, it's in here somewhere. What are these people saying? She checks her PDA, finally, and sees all the sick stuff Justin's been looking at. Like, whatever that's supposed to be. Apparently this is the final straw. Not the bit where he tried to pressure her into putting out and then threatened to leave her. Nope, a blurry JPEG is what does it. At least it wasn't a gif. While they're out shopping for weed, Justin's mum finds out that his brother has been emailing to his friend, so she confronts Justin about it, insisting that he's addicted to pornography despite having no evidence that he's looked at it since she removed his computer, and then decides to shut off all internet access at their house. Because clearly none of them could have any other use for the internet apart from going on a vagina safari. Forced to rely on the library computers, he inserts a USB which somehow allows him to look at porn. So we're supposed to believe that he's an uberlite hacker who can get around the library's firewall, but he doesn't think to delete his internet history? F*** off movie. Monica takes a break from her thottery to do some studying, so he switches to looking at her website. That's not creepy. At all. But he gets caught, his parents get told what he was looking at, and he gets suspended from the swimming team. Right, but if the school could see what he was looking at, they would clearly see that Monica has a lewd website. But that's never addressed? You gonna tell us what you were looking at online? You know, stuff. Websites, pictures. What? Pornography. I can't hear you. I said pornography, jeez! I was looking at pornography, is that what you guys wanna hear? Do you not think this is a conversation you should be having with him at home, or at least in the car? Not in the middle of his school? After they grill him at home, he insists that he can go cold turkey. But that same night, he steals his mum's credit card to buy internet access and then pay for the good stuff. How was he able to go online to buy more internet if the internet had already been cut off? And I know these parents are window-licking Luddites, but surely they've heard of passwords? Fucking change them! The resulting booby binge gets him a bit excited, so he goes around Monica's house after school. Wow, this is nice. <sighs> Don't sound so surprised. I might get the wrong impression. What do you mean? That you think I'm a cheap slut from a low-rent family. Less than a minute after she says that, she takes him upstairs to have sex. In her parents' room, with her grandparents' pictures watching. Kinky. You know, I'm not like little sweet what's her name. In case you hadn't noticed by now, cyber seduction has a serious case of Madonna horse syndrome, in that the women featured are either one of the two with no middle ground, which is exactly how these scared mums think. Hey, um, I'm sorry. This isn't how I pictured it would be, um... But then, how did he picture it? If he was so into p*** and her being a slut, surely he should be enjoying this? And he wanted to go all the way with the prudish Amy, but not with the slutty Monica who's clearly up for it? Again, this doesn't make any sense. She gets so angry that he rejects her that she chases him out of her house and then bangs her head into the bathroom sink. This girl has more issues than the film does. Back at the Sims house, Mummy finds out that he's been buying p***. 
Justin, you're addicted! You can't stop! They confront Justin again, which results in a pathetic fight with his dad, then a very awkward family dinner. He wants to apologise to Amy, so his mum drives him to her house. On the way, he finally admits that he has a problem. Amy says she doesn't feel ready to spend time with him yet, but as soon as he says he wants to go to church with her, she changes her tune very quickly. Oh, that's pretty radical. Yeah. I need to get radical. Here we go, come on, ready? Virginity is cool, come on, come on. Virginity is cool, what up, what up? Virginity is cool, he's got it, he's got it. Virginity is cool, come on, come on. Monica, whose head injury has moved now, tells her boyfriend and his friends that Justin attacked her, so as he's walking home, they ambush and beat the shit out of him. He stumbles into the swimming pool where the movie started, and then he tries to drown himself by lying face down in it, which is a really stupid way to off yourself. But he has visions of his prior swimming success and how proud everyone was of him, and he snaps out of it. Ironically enough, the baptism born again metaphor here is as subtle as the writing in your average porno, and the movie just ends there with a whole lot of burning questions unresolved. Do all his friends now hate him for the rest of his time at school? Does he ever get back together with Amy? Does he ever go to church? Does Monica's sight ever get found by the parents or teachers? Does she ever get punished for what she did? Does Justin become a wizard? You can't leave us like this! This script is like a ruined orgasm! And then we get a PSA about porn addiction and keeping track of what your kids are doing online. Which is all they really needed to say, because the entire hour and a half preceding it is the cinematic and moral equivalent of a belly flop. As well as sabotaging its own credibility through its melodramatic and incompetent presentation, Cyber Seduction doesn't bother to justify its thinking that pornography is a social disease, instead choosing to demonise it and its consumers, blaming all of Justin Zills on that one factor alone. Never mind that he's a normal hormonal teenager whose girlfriend endorses the whole our first time must be magical bollocks, whose dickhead friends peer pressure him into looking up porn in the first place, whose older crush manipulates and by some definitions even molests him, whose family doesn't respect his privacy, whose father is useless at educating him, and whose mother is overbearing, invasive and unreasonable, pressuring him to succeed but giving him the cold shoulder when he struggles. F*** all that, it's the low res boobies that will ruin your academic life, lose you your friends and girlfriend and drive you to suicide. And God help you if you discover hentai. Cyber Seduction serves as a textbook example of how not to make your point, and has earned its place among the pantheon of films that deserve to be remembered for all the wrong reasons. So get some mates round, put it on, and have yourselves a good laugh. Then go watch some p*** together, just because you can. You're a dick! Lots of shoutouts this time, so bear with me. Thanks to Internet Historian for recommending this film, Vox's Productions for his help with the script and research, Sketchadoodle for these great new character stills, and to Gameplay Metal for his help with the audio. Go check all these guys out, links are down below. I'd also like to say thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Do consider investing in it, it's a good product, and you'll also be helping out my channel. Not forgetting, of course, all of my lovely patrons. If you like my stuff, do consider becoming a patron yourself. And finally, to all of you, my dear viewers, thank you for watching. Make sure to follow me on social media for updates, and I'll see you next time.